the Honolulu Advertiser worked as a team to tell this compelling story of domestic violence in the islands. It was an exhaustive study. It was really sort of taking the universe of what are the things that lead society to ignore this problem. In the early part of 2007, there was a slew of domestic violence murders, intimate partner murders, and our editor was basically asking, why have we not been able to get a handle on this problem after all these years? This was a series of stories about women who no one else is going to write about, who uh, don't necessarily have access to voice their pain and their trauma and their issues and their victories over you know, pain and trauma. What I found is you approach them like any other uh, person you're going to be interviewing. You, know, with, with, you respect their distance, you respect what they feel comfortable talking about. And, if, if, and, and I told them from the get-go, if we start getting into an area where you don't feel comfortable talking about, let me know and we'll just immediately go someplace else. When they told me I would be doing a story on domestic violence, the f visions of how it would be photographed went through my head and all I saw was barricades. There's barricades from the shelters, barricades from the survivors, barricades from the prison system. Great story, but how am I going to get these images? It's one thing I hear about the violence versus to see a long scar on a person at the same time, uh, sensitively. The scar on the top of the woman's head where he cropped off her, her face. The bullet hole where she was pulling up her shirt, showing her bullet hole. I wanted impact, but, um, you know, if somebody doesn't want to be photographed, I never press the issue. But I find that after they get to know you, sometimes they agree. I think they did, did a superb job of linking the personal experience of perpetrators and victims and survivors um, but the key event was being able to pull in the articulate diary of someone who died but had been the victim of trauma. The sense was that we wanted to humanize the, the overall problem of domestic violence by telling a single person or a couple of people stories. Sometimes after homicides, when you go to make that stop to talk to the family to try to get a little bit more of the person, sometimes they're very closed and, and obviously it's a very emotional time. In Daisha's case, her family clearly wanted to make her death mean something. We, we went into this not knowing that Daisha had, had kept a journal. And so the family hadn't read the journal and didn't know what was in it. And so we had a number of conversations, to some extent sort of establishing trust. You know, do you trust me with this journal? Do you trust me to do right by you as a family? Um, there were things in it that we didn't publish. Um, there was language in it that was obviously not appropriate and we sort of protected to some extent, I guess you could say we were protecting Daisha. We were also protecting the family. So it made it very, very personal. Here's an issue, but here's one person's story.